Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome to the Tech Excel Indie YouTube channel. My name is Brittany and today I start a series on rag rug weaving. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of rag rug looms, the materials you'll need to weave a rag rug, and how to prepare those materials for your weaving. The materials you will need for this project are a rag rug loom. You can find more information in the description below. You'll also want fabric, more on that later, a pair of scissors, a cloth measuring tape, and a pencil and notebook to take notes. You can pretty much use any fabric or even plastic grocery bags if you want to. I like to work with natural fibers in most of what I do, so I tend towards using those in my rag rug weaving, but if you're going to the thrift store to find fabric for this project, you can grab any sort of sheet, curtain, shower curtain, any material that you would want to have represented in your project. One reason I love natural fibers is that as they start to break down, you can add them to a compost bin and they will naturally decompose, whereas a polyester or a synthetic fiber isn't going to decompose because it's basically plastic. If you want your rag rug to have a specific family of colors, then find fabrics in those colors that you can cut into strips and use to create whatever organization of stripes you want in your rag rug. A rag rug loom in a basic form is a frame structure with nails or pegs on either end spaced in an even spacing so that you can wrap a warp fabric from one peg on one end up and around the other and over and back and forth all the way across the width of your loom. Mine is a gift that my dad built off a set of plans and so I'll put some links in the description below for resources on how to create your own rag rug loom or places to buy them if you aren't interested in building your own. To build a very basic rag rug loom, you can take two strips of wood on either side with a strip on top of each of those ends, nail them or screw them together at the corners, and then place nails across the two ends one inch in spacing. So you'll have a nail, one inch, nail, one inch, nail, all the way across, and you'll do the same thing on the other end, making sure that the nails match up vertically on the top piece and the bottom piece. This will give you a very basic rag loom to start out with. You can add some sidebar metal pieces so that you can weave around those and this will help your weaving be straight on the sides without having to manage your tension. I do advise this if you are building your own and you are doing this for the first time because those side portions will help your walls stay nice and straight and you'll end up with a nice rectangular or square rug rather than one that kind of bows in like an hourglass. For more in-depth information on rag rug looms, check the description below. There are two ways to prepare the strips of fabric for your rag rug weaving. One is to cut your strips like I'm doing here using a rotary cutter and a ruler. We're going to be cutting our strips two inches wide. So you'll line that ruler up at two inches, cut your strips, and then start cutting. You'll need lots of strips for your project. So cut away. The other option is to tear your fabric and if you're working with a sheet you'll want to cut through the hem. So here I have a hemmed edge of the fabric. You'll cut through that hem and then pull on either side of the fabric to start to tear it. Rather than going into a complex explanation of fiber types and weave structures and why some fabrics do tear and some don't, I would just suggest cutting into your fabric just about two inches deep and then doing a tear test by holding on to each side of the fabric and pulling, putting a nice aggressive amount of strength into each side to tear it apart. If it doesn't tear and it just kind of um, doesn't move, then it's probably not a fabric that you're going to want to tear into strips. You'll want to cut that with a rotary cutter or cut it with scissors. You can cut your strips with scissors if you don't have a rotary cutter. You'll just, um, well, probably the best way would just be to guess two inches wide and cut all the length of the fabric. Rotary cutter is a lot quicker if you're doing this method, but use what's available to you. No need to buy extra materials, especially if this is your first rag rug and you don't even know if you like doing it. <laughs> now we're gonna take the calculations for the warp. You're going to measure from peg to peg, from the bottom to the top, this is the length of your loom measurement. Now count the pegs across. For my loom, that's 25 pegs, and you'll multiply that by two. 
that's the 25 up top and the 25 down below or however many you have. For me, that's 50 pegs. Now multiply the number of pegs by the length of the loom and that is the number of inches for your warp. To this, we're going to add an additional 50 inches to account for looping over the pegs and an additional 20 inches, 10 inches for the start and the end tails. So you have a little bit extra that we can weave into the rug once you're finished. So add that those 70 inches to that number and you'll have your final length of warp that you need to cut for your loom. Now for the weft, which is your weavers or what you're going to be weaving the rug with, estimate that with a two inch strip for the warp and a two inch strip for the weft, you're going to end up with half an inch per row because we pack it nice and tight together, we'll end up scrunching that down and filling about half an inch of space. So if you're getting a half an inch per row, you'll need two rows per inch. So you're going to multiply the length of your loom by two to calculate for those rows. That's how many rows you're going to need. For mine, I'm going to need 75 rows of weaving to complete my weaving. Now measure out the width of the loom. That's the side post to side post. This is your width measurement. Multiply this by the number of rows. And this is a basic number of inches of what you need for your weft. Note that down and now multiply that number by two. We multiply it by two because we need to calculate wrapping the weft around the warp. It's not a straight line like the warp is. It's a kind of an S shape, squiggle shape as it goes around the warp. And so we need to add some extra material to account for that and account for any give or inconsistency in the thickness of the fabric, which changes the width of the row. So with this final number in inches, you can either convert this to feet by dividing it by 12 or by yards by dividing it by 36 inches and get your final length for the weft. Now this is an estimate, it's going to shift and you may end up with more or less um, to fill your space depending on the thickness of the fabric. If you're using two inch wide strips of corduroy fabric, which is fairly dense, you're going to fill more space than if you're using a two inch wide strip of a cotton sheet just because it compacts to less space than the corduroy does. So keep that in mind. This is an estimate. It's not exact because it's dependent on the materials that you chose. Okay, if all of that calculation sounded exhausting and you are deciding whether or not this is actually worth your time and effort and interest, I'm going to say, if you are using scrap materials and if you don't mind stopping to cut out strips between rows when you run out of weft material, you can absolutely not worry about the calculating and just dive into cutting strips, setting up your warp and weaving with the weft fabric you have pre-cut, stopping to cut more when you run out and going back and forth like that. If I wasn't doing this for a video, that's probably how I would work because I am working with scrap fabric. But just to give you the information in case you want to plan out color order and do something a little bit more fancy than just throw fabric on the loom, then I wanted to give you the calculations so that you have that information. And with that, I'll say go ahead and cut out as much of the material as you want. I would say cutting out your warp at least ahead of time will be handy because in next week's video, I'm going to share how to set up your warp. And if you're able to just pull your strips and start to add them to your loom right away, that will flow a lot more easily than having to go back and forth. Once you've done the warp, then you can cut and weave, cut and weave, cut and weave to your heart's desire. But getting the warp up and ready to go, you might wanna do that calculation at least. Or not, it's totally up to you. I'm totally in support of both. For updates on all the textile indie content, use this nifty QR code to sign up for my email list or use the links in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me in this project. Until next week, happy making. See you later.